Welcome back to the item shop. I'm Super Derek and today we're going to be taking a look at a different book. Another book that I'm actually really excited about and I've been hearing about from you guys pretty pretty excited. It's called The Guide to Japanese RPGs or Japanese Role Playing Games. And uh, I was sent this for review. So I'll go ahead and, uh, and show you what we got here. It's still in the packaging. It was shipped in so I can see what it's like when uh, when it's actually shipped out to you guys and what to expect. So the plastic it came in a plastic bag and inside the plastic bag is the cardboard box. So the plastic helps keep everything nice and dry in case, you know, something gets wet during shipping. That has happened to me in the past. That has happened to me in the past where I uh, ordered a book uh, from, from Amazon and it arrived and it just ended up getting wet and all the pages were soaked through. It's, it's sad, but it does happen. So, uh, here's the actual book uh, box that it comes in. You can see the nice uh, logo here with the custom box here, the Bitmap Books box, the publishers of the game. They're based out of the, the UK. And uh, let's see, we've got an easy tear thing here. So it looks like I may not need my knife today after all. Let's go ahead and pull that off. And here we go. So inside that outer cardboard, we have another cardboard wrap here. Uh, let's see. Can we take it off of here? And here we have on the inside even more protective packaging. You know, all the corners are uh, foamed up here so that they don't get dinged. This is amazing as far as uh, book shipping goes. This is super high quality padding. Uh, it really feels like that is some dense foam on the corners. So if you've ordered hardback books in the past, especially big ones, you know that sometimes those corners can get really scuffed and roughed up on the way over. They really take care, uh, this publisher, when shipping these books to make sure that they arrive in immaculate condition. So we'll go ahead and take off the corner protectors here. Maybe we'll save those for another day. <laughs> wow, those, those feel really, really sturdy. And first impressions are this thing is a tome. <laughs> it is, this is a big, big book. Just open her up like so. Wow. Okay. Let's move all this out of the way real quick. All right, so here's what I got. I did not get the collector's edition, though there is a collector's edition available. The uh, collector's edition also has some extra cool stuff, like some uh, bookmarks that come with it, a uh, flash drive preloaded with a bunch of games, uh, demos for uh, for various RPGs in production. A lot of indie RPGs in production. Uh, I know at least of Shrine's Legacy is one, and I'm not sure what else is on it, but uh, that that's all detailed on their website here. Neat. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the book itself here. It's shrink wrapped. You got to be careful when you're opening these for the first time when they come heat, uh, when they come shrink wrapped like this. Let's go ahead and open her up. Because if you open it up too uncarefully, you can actually crack the spine sometimes and decrease the longevity of the uh, the health of the book. So this is something I've been looking into because I, as I collect more of these books, as I, uh, as I do more unboxings of collector's editions and things, I do want to make sure that these things stay in really good condition. And so I've been looking up a lot I've been looking up a lot of information about how best to maintain books and how to keep them around as long as possible. So 
Wowza, this is this is in this is intense. <laughs> wow. Good golly, Miss Molly. <laughs> I love I love that uh, NTSCJ, that uh, that little region code there. Nice little homage to the video games that they are uh, that they're representing with this book. So the guide to Japanese role playing games is a book is a book that is all about well Japanese role playing games. And it's got some reviews in it of a bunch of different Japanese role-playing games and kind of talks about the history of those books. I haven't, or those, of those games rather, and their developments. So needless to say, if you've seen the kind of stuff that I do in the game collection, this does a lot with that. Like a, a very, if you wanted the game collection in a book, this seems like what I would, uh, would want out of it. So let's take a look at it here. And, uh, well, actually, let's take a look at this cover, that custom artwork on the cover right here. I love that. I love the way that this looks, where it's got the, um, you know, the boy and the girl playing uh, the old CRT TV. And, you know, you can see that this is the world that's being presented to them by this, uh, this Japanese role playing game that they're playing. <laughs> oh, man. I love the way that looks. Oh, gosh. Oh, the, they got the little slime here, and I'm like, I'm trying to think, like, which game is this representing? But I feel like it's intentionally not representing any single game, because there's so many games that I could ascribe this to. <laughs> oh, that... Oh, man, okay. You know, they got the red-headed swordsman. That could be... That could be Adol. It could be nobody. Is that Dogi? I don't know. I don't, I don't think so, but it could be. Um, and then on the back, we've got this message from bitmap books i love the i love everything about this <laughs> it's kind of got that i love the the red spine here that they have that almost makes it look like a japanese release of a video game where it comes with the site uh the uh the spine card it kind of looks like a spine card of an old uh of a of a cd based uh jrpg <sighs> I really do wish I could read Japanese. I wonder what that says. I wonder I wonder if it's complete nonsense. Somebody out there, you could probably tell me what that means, what that says. Google Translate could probably tell me what that is, and maybe uh maybe I'll give it a look here in a little bit. Welcome to the world of Japanese role-playing games. <laughs> ah Role-playing games adapted for computers from their pen and paper for bearers. Oh, so they're going all the way back here. Okay, enough hum humming and han. Let's go ahead and open up the first page here. Just kind of take a look at what we see inside. Very slowly, very carefully. A, gi a guide <laughs> to Japanese role-playing games. Got ourselves a table of contents. How many pages are there in this tome? This is a brick of a book. And... <laughs> 650 pages. 650 pages here. And in the back... Oh, wow, wow, wow. Okay, so like... I'm just flipped back to the back here. They... Uh, an index, an index of the games that, that they talk about. You know, there's Lady Stalker, which I briefly talked about for a little bit there in my Land Stalker review over here, all of the Persona titles up to this point. Just so, so many familiar titles. The Kenko JRPG series. Very interesting. I'll have to, have to see what they have to say about those Kenko JRPGs. Well, you know what? Maybe we should uh, maybe we should start at the beginning. Um, it's it's a daunting book. It's so big. It's kind of hard to to say where we should start. Really, a listing of all of the contributors of the book, and then starting at the very beginning. What are JRPGs? What indeed? <sighs> I'm very curious because the subject of what exactly is a JRPG is uh is a subject that's up for debate you know and it's one that i've come across a few times i've got my own very strong opinions i often don't provide strong opinions in my show about things but uh but 
JRPGs and what they are and what that means, it is something that I'm actually very interested in uh, the discussion of. Because a JRPG, in my opinion, is not necessarily a role-playing game that is made in Japan. I think that that would be a waste of a distinction, especially when you consider that, well, Final Fantasy IX was made in the United States and Hawaii by a team of both American and Japanese developers. And then you also have Secret of Evermore, which is functionally a clone of Secret of Mana. And that was made entirely in the United States, while Secret of Mana was made in Japan. So it doesn't really make sense to di differentiate between those two by giving them completely different genres. Despite the fact that they're identical in pretty much any other myriad of ways, any important gameplay factors at least. Um, so yeah, I think personally speaking, Japanese role-playing games is just, or JRPG, is just shorthand for saying a Japanese style of role-playing game. But you know, we're going way off of, uh, way off the beaten path with this book. I do want to take a look deeper into this book and, uh, and see what it has to say. Uh, so this is just the initial unboxing. Oh man, look at this. Oh, they even have, they even have all the way in the very beginning a picture of Hydelide, you know? And what's this, uh, Dragon Slayer, right? Is that Dragon Slayer? It looks like Dragon Slayer by Falcom. So if you want to know more about Hydelide and Dragon Slayer by Falcom, go check out my video, Is, is Hydelide Really That Bad? Because, <laughs> man, it really does start on page one. This is some page one stuff that, uh, you know, people think Hydelide is a terrible game, but it isn't. It's just a a victim of being localized to the West five years after its inception. So it's a very important book, a very important game in the book of Japanese role-playing games. That is something special, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this unboxing. I'll do a follow-up soon with my impressions on the actual book itself and its contents, so stay tuned for that.